I got an award I'm giving out, guys. It's the Sit, sit Your Ass Down Award. I got two recipients of the Just Sit Down Award. My first recipient for the Just Sit Down Award goes to this brother here, Brother Billy D, y'all. Brother Billy D. Williams. He inspired this award. Brother B. D. Billy D. Williams was on the Bill Maher podcast show. And they were having a conversation about a lot of stuff. Sweeping conversation that he was having with Bill Maher about a lot of things about Hollywood and about Billy D. being so fine. Bill kept talking about that. I was like, damn, okay, Bill, we get it. You think he's attractive? Okay, okay. They go back to the Playboy Mansion days with Hugh Hefner. Both of them. So I, I don't know exactly what Billy D. had going on, but apparently more than just a Co 45. You understand what I'm saying? That Co 45 may, maybe had some, had a little, it was a boiler maker. Maybe it had a little alcohol in that Co 45. Something beyond a more liquor, like some extra kick to that Co 45. Because they were having a really a deep conversation. And during that conversation, Bill Maher, I guess Bill Maher brought it up about some acting roles. Blackface. For some reason, blackface came up. I want people to understand, because I got a lot of people that watch the show, different people from different times. Blackface was a negative, degrading manner of which depicting black people. They used burnt cork and they painted their faces. And then they went out on stage and acted ignorant as hell. You think that Netflix show coming out from the good times is trifling. You should see the characters that people played when they had blackface on their face. I'm I'm just as lazy, master. Where the chicken at? What's a watermelon? Eyes bugging, lips all pursed. It was degrading on purpose over, over, over the top. Degrading that and sexualizing black women and degrading black men. Shiftless, lazy, and stupid and simple. For the amusement of white people, this was not anything other than that. That's what blackface was. So somehow the conversation went to this, and here goes the way Billy D. Williams, the iconic Billy D. Williams, responded to Bill Maher bringing up blackface. Today, I mean, they would never let you do that. Why? Blackface? Why you, not? Because you should do it. That's maybe that's your point of view. You should, that, if that, you're that, an actor, you should do anything you want to do. I. That's a great point of view, but the theater would be bombed. Oh, I mean, Muni and I used to talk about this all the time. Muni was the one who was the first person that I worked with in those years who said to me, if whatever, you, as an actor, you should be able to do whatever you think you can do, you should be able to do it. But again, not to bring up your sore point, but you actually lived in a period where you couldn't do that where you couldn't play the part matter. you should have played. But it didn't matter. I, the point is... And that's a great attitude, but it still did happen. Of course it happened. Okay. I mean, but, but the fact is that you discuss it. Anybody right. can talk about it means that it wasn't happening. But, I mean, but and the Paul point is, comes from an era... Well, you don't go through life feeling like I'm a victim. Correct. I couldn't agree with that more. I, I, I'm just... I mean, I refuse to go through life no. saying to the world... I'm pissed off. I'm not going to be pissed off 24 hours a day. And you shouldn't because of all that <laughs> you got. Okay. All right. All right. In and out the show, it seemed like Bill was fixated on that, that ability of Bill, Billy D. Williams being a sex symbol in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s. I don't know. Here's the thing, guys. Billy D. Williams could need to sit his ass down. Billy D needs to sit his ass all the way down. Folks, giving cover for the exploitation of black people under the guise that this shows that we're not bothered, we're unbothered, is some corny shit. 
Nobody else does this. See, Billy D. Williams thinks he's some type of trailblazer because he has transcended the stereotypes and all the degradation that was hoisted upon black people. As if that makes us, you know, somehow, like somehow we're immune from it. Like it had no impact. These things that were done to black people were done intentionally. They were done to keep black people down. And I guess his way of fighting back may work for him, which was to say, hey, I'm just going to laugh at this shit. I'm going to laugh at this shit. I'm just, none of this affects me. I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than this body. I'm bigger than the skin. I'm bigger than this country. I'm bigger than what you, what you I understand what he's trying to say. Because I watched, trying to get to this point, because I didn't want to grab the clips that were out there on, on Twitter. I wanted to force myself to actually do the research, which is sit through the show. So I don't want to call Billy D. Williams a coon because that's that. That's easy. You just watch the little short clip and call him a coon. It's deeper than that. He actually thinks he's transcending something. He's from, he's from that school. He's 87 years old. And he feels that we should not let anything have any power over us. We determine what's important to us. And this shit's a joke. This life. We cannot, you can't go through life that way. And I respect him having that position. And he's entitled to that position. And if you're 87 years old and you want to feel like you don't care if somebody call you the N-word, or if you don't care, we just, you know, we, you don't care if someone wears blackface and degrades black people on the stage, you don't care about those implications, implications, fine. But you don't get to speak for everybody else, bro. That's all I'm saying. It would have been nice if he would have said, he would have threw that in, and then I wouldn't have had no beef with it because we are allowed to be individuals. We're allowed to be individuals and have our own perspective. I got no problems with that. But when it sounds like you're speaking for other people, and when you go on the Bill Maher show, and you say it to the screen like, I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to be a victim. Everybody wasn't as lucky as Billy D. Williams. People need to point that out. Billy D., some people were not as lucky as you to become a sex symbol. There was some just regular dark-skinned black people who got treated like shit who didn't have an opportunity to express their gifts in this world because of the color of their skin by a system that was determined to make it that way. You could say, you're not going to let that hold you down. A lot of people were held down. It had to play, in order to even be on the screen, had to play degraded roles. So I totally disagree with him. At the end of the day, sit your ass down, Billy D. Don't stop talking for people. Stop talking. Talk for you. Say, preface everything you say and say, hey, I, Billy D. Williams, feel this way about me personally. For the rest of society, including Tim Black's kids and grandkids, I don't want this for them. But for me, I'm fine. I'm fine with people playing blackface. I'm fine with people mocking black people to their face, to the world. Boosting stereotypes, negative stereotypes that make black people un inhumane, inhuman, unhuman, animalistic. Animalistic. We are animals. That's what they were saying. And you co-sign that. You say that's okay because it's art. Now, nah, it's not art to dehumanize a group of people based on color. That's that art. And fuck you for for submitting that to the world. And also in all the uh in all the uh horrible bigots in the comment section alone, for me having to look and see all the harming, all the harmful bigots in the comment section of the Bill Maher video going, yeah, he's got a point. Look at him. I love the way his attitude about it. It's just great. He doesn't have a problem. Those are the same people that supported Candace Owens all this time. Same people, the exact same people. Oh, thank God, we got yeah, yeah. Why can't other blacks be like Billy D and not care what we say? Why, why we gotta stop saying niggas and stop? You know why we gotta stop being racist? We should be able to keep on. Billy D's got such a healthy attitude. Live and let live. So what if they only own two percent of the wealth in the country they build for free against their will? So what? So what? They can't get business loans, even when they had the same 
credit scores. Oh, so what? They pay more on interest rates, even when they have the same rating. So what? So what? So what? So what? Why are you complaining about it? Stop being a victim. Not to be outdone. Because it's a great day, man. I'm giving out two awards. Two Sit Your Ass Down Awards. My second Sit Your Ass Down Award goes to Gerard Carmichael. It's amazing I'm able to get this award out so quickly because he was just recently dumping all over Dave Chappelle. Saying Dave Chappelle should not be making trans jokes. And Dave Chappelle, his whole legacy, his legacy is going to be making trans jokes. You know what I realized? Gerard Carmichael has made a lot of slave jokes. Episode Gerard joked. I sometimes joke that like our relationship is like a slave and the master son who like <laughs> teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. <laughs> That's my burden. I think that shit's hilarious. The reaction online seems sex in connection. During the latest episode, Gerard joked. I sometimes joke that like our relationship is like a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that shit's hilarious. Yeah, he thinks that he makes, it's funny to me sometimes, man, where the people that tell you don't make jokes about LGBTQIA have no problem making black jokes. No problem making slave jokes. That's fine. There were people from the LGBTQIA community saying, hey, man, this makes us look really bad. You're really dogging us out by you being a member. You just came out as gay last year, and you're already, you've been making jokes about say with your white partner, your sex play jokes, and you play the runaway slave with your, and then you tell people, and you think that's funny. I don't know. And it wouldn't be as bad if he wasn't just policing someone making jokes about trans people. But he can make jokes about black people and about slavery, like the most touchy thing, the most... It's a holocaust. He gets to make jokes about that. It would be once again, guys. It'd be different if he hadn't already, if he hadn't spoken up about Dave Chappelle. Said Dave Chappelle, your legacy is shit, and this is you're doing this is wrong, and you're an egomaniac because you think you should be able to make these jokes. And then we find out he's a maker jokes like that himself, but it's been about black people. But he's fine with that. And I find out it's not just his HBO new HBO thing where he's doing this. And they hand him on business and. And out of nowhere, these four police officers came out of nowhere and they pulled guns on me and they forced me down onto the ground and they handcuffed me. And I remember getting a scratch on my face from my face hitting the sidewalk and then they stood me up and they flashed this floodlight in my eyes. And it was all because I fit a description. And that happens every single day here. And I would rather go through that every single day in America than get my master's degree in North Korea. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm starting to appreciate slavery <laughs> for the blessing in disguise that it was. And I know that sounds cold. You know, it's like, how could a man say he appreciates slavery? But you guys got to understand, if it weren't for slavery, you guys, I would be in Africa right now. <laughs> Africa. Yeah, that's your brother, Gerard Carmichael. That's from a few years ago. And what I'm saying is this, man. Gerard Carmichael's been complaining about Dave Chappelle making trans jokes. Not because he really has a problem with it. Because it's a play. It's a play, I feel. It's a play in order to get publicity and get his name out there more. It's a play for him to get more media attention. And who, who better to go after? Go after Dave Chappelle. You go after probably one of the hottest, not the hottest comedian of the last 10 years, you go after one of the hottest comedians. 
best way to do it. And all of a sudden he comes out too. Like he comes out, he wasn't out, he comes out. And then he goes directly at Dave Chappelle for making trans jokes. And it turns out you've been making all types of black jokes and African jokes and slave jokes. So you're not like foreign to the idea that going to talking about taboo topics is a right that a comedian has. Get what I'm saying? He's not averse to the, he don't have a problem with you talking about taboo subjects. So that means he really, see what I'm saying? He don't have a real problem with it. What it is, he was an opportunist. Gerard Carmichael is a piece of garbage because he's an opportunist just looking to get ahead and he's using Dave Chappelle's name to do so. That's all this is. And I'm not saying it's wrong for him to, it's not, look, I'm not even pissed off. I'm not going to kick, kick, Karen him. I'm not going to be a Darren, okay? I don't know if we got a black man Karen thing. I'm going to call it a Darren. I'm not going to be a Darren about this. You want to make your jokes, make your jokes, bro? You are a B.I. You're a biatch for calling out Dave Chappelle for doing similar stuff. And it was all, now we see it was all about opportunity. Opportunity. It's the, it, forget the fact that your comedy is not my type of comedy. I don't find you funny. But I realize I may not be your target audience. You know what I'm saying? I get that. And you know, I don't have to like everybody. I prefer Shane Gillis and uh, Richard Pry and, you know, Bill Burr and Kevin Hart. Or I mean, even Kevin Hart's funny in this guy. But, um, you know, um, Cat Williams or Bernie Mac. I mean, so many other comedians I would put ahead. Corey Holcomb that I would put ahead of Eddie Griffin. I would put ahead of Gerard Carmichael's like crazy. DC Curry, like so many folks, Godfrey. I mean, so many people. I mean, Ari Spears. It's funnier than Gerard Carmichael. But you ended up with the show and you got another show. But once again, guys, this is Gerard Carmichael gets the sit down. He gets to sit your ass down award because he's full of shit. That's all this is. If, if you're saying these guys can't make jokes on taboo topics, then you can't make jokes on taboo to topics. You don't get to make jokes about us and then say, but they can't make jokes about them or us. Uh, like, because you're them or us. Get what I'm saying? Like, you can't say don't make trans jokes and then you make black jokes. You know, and slave jokes. Ugh. Ew. Ew. It didn't make, like, Africa's a horrible place jokes. This guy said, thank God for slavery. Talk about hacky. Like, I wonder how many black guys do predominantly, perform predominantly in front of predominantly white audiences, make jokes like that. Probably all of them. Some of you guys watching don't know I did a little stand-up comedy. I did some stand-up comedy in white rooms because I was with a white guy on his tour. His name is Lee Camp. And I didn't make jokes about slaves to the all-white audience trying to get an easy white jokes about how I, you know, like, I did do one police joke. But I was in Portland, so I was like, I was calling my homeboy. I was calling my homie. Because in Portland, everybody wanted to give me weed. And I was like, man, y'all can't give me this weed. I, I got to leave here. I got to go back to the airport. Y'all don't get me locked up. I can't call my boy and be like, yo, man, I need you to come get me. He'll be like, where you at? I'm like, I'm in Portland. I'm in Portland. The hell are you doing in Portland? Don't no brothers go to Portland. But that's about as far as I went with that. I wasn't like, yeah, hey, yeah, and if black people, we got a problem because we from Africa. Have you been to Africa? We got a bunch of African booty scratchers. We don't have no shoe. And I'm like, I only did it for like a year, and I didn't do this type of shit. And this is a professional comedian. So all I'm saying is that he's a, look, he, I'm not a Darren. He's entitled to make his bad jokes or his good jokes. Fine. 
My thing is that guy should not complain when somebody else makes jokes about trans people. That's all I'm saying. If we're going to make jokes, if you're going to be a person complaining about those types of jokes, you can't be a person that makes those types of jokes about other people. That's all I'm saying. That's all. All right, guys. Let's keep it moving. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I just killed that video. For my next video, click over here, go watch it, become a member by clicking the subscribe button, and don't be a stranger, you know? I'm putting out new content every day. I love y'all. Stay cool. Wolfpack.